What's up, y'all? Tariq Rashid has decided that he does not want to engage in a public debate with me. He believes the one that he did in our conversation was sufficient. I'm going to deal with each of his objections point by point. Keep it locked. Rock Status TV, hit that thumbs up. The Rock Status IG, rockstatus.com. Under construction. So, Dr. Dr. Adolf Heinrich Derek Don Munich von Wolfenstein Hassenfaffach Cologne, Columbus, the namesake, has had time to go home and think of some splaining to try to dismiss that slamming in the paint, that DDT. That backflip off the top rope that Tariq Nasheed yeah. put on him in that debate last night, which I will react to too. But before, yeah. Raw Status TV will react yeah. to his so called yeah. rebuttal. Never stop it. This yeah. is Raw Status TV. Don't stop, you won't be stopped. Yeah. Yo. Check. Yo. Yo. ODP. Yo, we back again. No time to be a player when you own the game. Throw a strike after strike. Rappers stay in your lane. Label super like the boat. Never gutter when we roll. Got my racks in the vault. I'm defending the goal. I said the step back. I'm perfecting my shot. I said the dagger. The buzzer beater deep in the clock. Shutting all haters up like LeBron in the clutch. First down touchdown. Big balls when I swing. I took it over the fence. I said the MVP. I got my teeth on the bench. Feel the pressure. The pressure. I guess we all in. The effort. The effort. It's time to win. Investors impress. The ego. The birdie. Yo, what did you expect? I did it with ease. Why you breaking your neck? It's the first round of knockout. You might as well tap. I respect this organic. You can keep the clout. Make it rain like doing curls in DC. I'm getting capital gains. Know thyself, and the enemy is no concern. I yearn for my turn. Let the rubber meet the road. I love to feel the burn. Pass the bag. No, we ain't standing for the flag. To the pixels in the pen. And reparations are passed. No fame, no shame. I started late in the game. So call this a must win. Making franchise money with a dollar store pen. No coach, no lights. I trained in the midnight. What is a deal breaker? The combination of jab. My position is pole. Don't even try to pass. What is a. I keep looking ahead with a stone face. When dude says hi to me the next day at the job. What is a, I'm not going to the party if they're there. And don't let them in if we're having a party. That is continuing the falsities when you know and we know, when everybody knows that you started from a place that you are not ending at. 50-50, Jay-Z, you weren't able to hop over the fence with me. What happened to that? Let's take a listen to Derek. Flopping around on the deck of the ship of rap culture. Like a fish out of water. So the first thing that he speaks about is the fact that the Latin... A uh, breakdown is a made-up myth. Well, what he doesn't understand is that the actual name for the breakdown is called the Latin Descartica. And uh, the first time you hear that term is from a man by the name of Cachao, a Cuban. Okay, and so it comes by way of Africa to the Caribbean islands and then via the slave trade. Descartica, don't mean nothing over here. 50% creation didn't happen Yes or no, true or false, Fat Joe told a lie. We don't even need you to answer. We know the answer. So all of this auxiliary, angle changing, the attempted crossover, the moving of the goalposts with you and Conzo, who we at Raw Status single-handedly took apart the campaign to somehow present a photographer as a pioneer of hip-hop. A photographer. That's what we are dealing with, people. And again, 
We magnify the rudimentary level, the base elements of the strategy that they are using because it doesn't even make sense to debate these people. Let us keep going. Get into the US. Okay, those instruments, those Afro percussive instruments. And what I mean by that is what I said at the beginning of the video. What is a deal breaker? That means I won't even debate with you over nothing. You're now in the realm of dudes that I don't mess with. Let us keep going. Come from us. I want to make something clear. There is a difference between the African drum and the drums of the Caribbean. They are different and they are not the same. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read. The drums of the Caribbean came from Africa. Don't try to throw a little salsa picante on top of it with some cow brains and tell me that it's something different. But then again, none of what you said has anything to do with rap culture. You wanna talk about sampling? Symphony orchestras are sampling, are, are, are sampled. Bells and whistles, horses and cats are sampled. Car engines are sampled. Did any of those disciplines or people that I mentioned or uh, 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 styles that I mentioned have anything to do with the creation of rap? You know the answer. Let us keep going. An excerpt on the history of the conga drum. And you be the judge. Forgive me for looking at the screen. The conga drum is at the cornerstone of countless Latin rhythms and has helped Latin percussion as a whole. Okay, so this is all filler, filler bustering. It is important to recognize what he is doing and what I've been saying on this channel for a long time about not only Spanish culture, but in particular island, meaning the Caribbean, Spanish culture. He is making a bad attempt at I'm white and I say so. The quadroon, quadrupus e classifications, meaning these, these multiple racial groups that they have, which are basically just mixed people, either part African, part whatever, part white, part whatever. Sometimes a mix of all three or four or five. Let us keep going. I'm extremely popular in many musical genres from all over the world of Afro-Cuban origin. The conga is more widely known. So again, these people are mainly a mixed people. And I don't mean with black necessarily, but what I'm saying is that they're going to play whatever side of the fence that they think is going to be advantageous. Fecal matter from the giant colon that is Spain, that is Spanish Western culture. You know, it's funny, almost spooky, a little bit eerie, is the fact that some of the things that we say here at Raw Status are hyperbole. We're having a little bit of fun with it. But then again, these jokes oftentimes come from a real place, and I'll be damned if they don't do exactly what we say they're going to do. Instead of manning up and saying, you know what, Fat Joe is wrong. Um, some small hats at the labels paid us to do it and we oblige because we come from a culture where it's normal to step on the backs of a black person, especially when they're not looking. Because we come from a Spanish culture. We are unable to do it ourselves. We don't even take baths and we can't even play football. The Medawar La Raza had a reverse effect. We became weaker, stinkier. So we're just gonna give it up to the black American culture. No, you can't do that. And you'll be fine after that. You probably make more money. 
They do the only thing that they know. That is revert to 18th century white supremacist tactics. Lie, lie, lie. Like Al Bundy said, cheat our heinies off. So that's what you're seeing coming out here. It doesn't matter what he says. His goal isn't to be right. His goal is not to show any respect towards black people, in particular black Americans. The foundation. It's not important being right. It's not even important being successful. It's important not being black or not having any respect at all for black people. That is Spanish culture. That's why they be getting robbed when they get up off that boat. I don't believe in that, but I understand. Build on that. Is the tumbadora, the timba, or the jicamo in Cuba? The conga player, his or herself, is referred to as the conguero or the conguera. The conga drum sees its inception ¿Qué? in Cuba in correlation with the thousands of slaves being brought over from. Okay, so Cuba is not Puerto Rico, is it? And rap music ain't Cuban. Not in the least. So, there's two levels going on here. Underestimation of black people, their Achilles heel, meaning uh, those that suffer from melanin deficiency. And, I'm white and I say so, but a bad attempt. Basically, this falls under, we're smarter under the uh, category of we're smarter than the black people. Understand coming from a Spanish speaking culture, by default, you are anti-black because Spanish speaking culture is anti-black. From Spain, we'll throw Portugal in there to anywhere you find them in the world. That includes the Philippines. As a matter of fact, they are the worst. Puerto Rico, not far behind. So, their home training, which is nil. Their childhood education, meaning the ones that believe in white supremacy. Everybody that is a Latino does not believe in white supremacy. For that matter, what the hell is a Latino? But there's an untold amount of white supremacists that speak Spanish and we don't know who they are because they lie, lie and lie. At the root of their thinking is superstition, pseudoscience, and miseducation about real history. How can you have an honest relationship or even get an honest word out of somebody that truly believes that you're a primate? A, that's projection due to the Neanderthal mixture of DNA. And B, they really be thinking that. They're taught that in the home. A sick and evil people. back in the day was doing some mascot work as Black Panther from Marvel and only the Puerto Rican kids not the Asians, not the whites the East Indians fucked with me heavy the Arabs messed with me heavy. The black kids ran up to me and gave me a hug, but always the Puerto Rican kids, not even the Mexicans, the Puerto Ricans. Hi, blackie. First of all, the color black is an insult. Understand what, you, what you're dealing with, the level of, I don't even know what to call that. That's Neanderthal logic. Resentment of a dominant gene. But they understand the anti-black concept very well because they are from a Spanish speaking culture. So like I said, childhood education. Also Neely Fuller teaches us those that are in a position to practice white supremacy should be suspected as such. Now what position are they in? They're in a position to spread lies. They have their mediocre, vastly overrated representative from Bronx and I don't mean China Ma Mac. 
We're talking about fat hole, fat hole. We need to take that garbage back to Puerto Rico. So from here on out, just understand what you're watching. You're watching someone as a child who, pro who possibly referred to people as blackie and things like that, the pseudoscience, the, quite frankly, the fear-based anger instilled in young fecal matters from the giant intestinal tract that is Spain. Let us keep going. The predominantly uh, the Bantu speaking Congo region of Africa during the 17th and the 18th centuries. When slavery was finally abolished in Cuba towards the end of the 19th century, an explosion of cultural exchange and development took hold. Rumba and other forms of drum centric music began to develop, and alongside them, the conga drums and other respective instruments. So when we talk about the last. So the predecessors to the conga drum come from the Congo, from Africa, okay? That's not Cuban nor Puerto Rican. And the Cubans that allegedly uh, made a different version called the conga. And we don't say conga, it's conga. This is America. Come on, let me body, let me do that conga. She was Cuban, actually. And... That has nothing to, to do with rap once again. So, you know, the, those were the Cubans. You're Puerto Rican. Just like Joseph Conzo. You can take the picture, but you ain't make it. You can play the drum, but they ain't make it. But the Cubans aren't saying that. Then again, Fat Joe is half Cuban. Maybe that's where this is coming from. Let us keep going. Breakdown. When we talk about the Latin descarga, we're talking about those instruments, those Afro-Caribbean instruments that were used in the early b-boy breaks, which is the bongo, the conga, the clave, the cowbell, the timbales, all of those instruments. But when it comes to the conga and the bongo, those are Afro-Caribbean instruments. Okay, one more time. The conga is not made in Africa. The conga is made in Cuba. It is. So that's what you see written on the web. Then again, you also see that Cool Herc was the founding father on the web and that hip hop came from uh, Spanish and Latin culture. I'd be willing to bet that there's something that resembles a conga on the continent of Africa somewhere. Let us keep going. Possibly. And uh, it is an iteration of the African drum, okay? So that needs to be pointed out. So let's talk about the breaks. The breaks are those sections of the records that have the Afro-percussive breakdowns in them. So no, Afro-percussive, don't even try that. You see how you try to associate Africa with Puerto Rico. Latin Chico, Latin Chico, Puerto Rican Rico Suave in a red Corolla. Ayo, hey, does he want to play? So he could lace it into this next statement. That's called the overlay for the underplay. Give it up. And I don't mean we going to show you how to party. I mean, give it up your position. You're losing. Let us keep going. Songs like Apache. Songs like give it up, turn it loose. Songs like Yellow Sunshine, songs like Baby Huey's um, uh, Listen to Me, songs like um, Just Begun. All, all of these anthems contain the sounds of the Latin descarga, the go off. And you Whether or not that is true, what he's not saying, what he is omitting is that rap is based on sampling for the most part. Unless you're DJ Quick and you have live bands. Again, deception, Spanish culture. If you see a rat in your house, do you sit there and try to reason with it and listen to it explain? It can't explain, it's speaking rat. That's what they're doing. They're speaking hate, anti-black hate. It comes from an early age. When I was a child, we didn't walk past people and, and say whitey. After a certain age, until the Howard Beach thing happened. 
and those white kids came from that school to play our school in basketball in New Jersey. And after the game, they chased down the white kids and beat them up. And everybody started yelling out Howard Beach. Even the white kid with us got a couple of kicks in. So again, it's not necessary to listen to the explaining. It's not necessary to debate. Although there's nothing wrong with talking to these people. Like Francis, Dr. Welsing did on uh, the early talk shows like Donahue. Look that up if you haven't seen it. It's pretty popular. It's a waste of time. You don't argue with a cockroach when you see it on the counter. You follow it back to wherever it came. You put down some trap. You put down some caulk. And look for some more holes. There's nothing to discuss. It's a roach. Can't deny that. Let's talk about Apache for a minute. Tariq brought up that, you know, the, the, the woman who played on Bongo Rock was a foundational black American. And he's absolutely correct. She, in fact, did play on Bongo Rock by the incredible bongo band. But what needs to be made clear is that bongo rock is not considered a b-boy anthem. It is Apache that is the b-boy anthem. And who is the conguero on Apache? Now understand a couple of things here. When these people start getting off into this, these seldom known groups, not saying that about these groups, but what I mean is it starts to get into another area, kind of like house music did back in the 90s. It was Jungle Brothers. It turned into what is love? Baby, don't hurt me. No more. Whoa, whoa. I mean, was that really house music? Was that really black culture? It was ironed out, faded out, bleached out, kind of like the skin of Latinos. It lost its flavor. It didn't taste good no more. It was whack. So understand that when they start getting into this stuff, like, again, I remember I told you in another video, this white rap group that I knew of, they used to be down at the college radio where we were and freestyle on our weekends. It was at our University of our Louisville. And they would say things like, oh, I don't listen to that kind of hip hop. That's not my hip hop. And I'm sitting here like, you know, we have different moods. So for different subject matter. But some of that so-called, you know, this was during the, 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 the lyricism versus uh, commercial, what was deemed commercial days, the civil war in hip hop. But a lot of that commercial shit was tight. If you like Tupac, then you you have to like Cameron. You have to like DMX. Noriega. When the new, when the when the when the street kind of shit, when cats that were commercial could actually flow in, and, and, and it was starting to become the norm in rap. When the lyricism met the money making. So, in my eyes, he's again pulling a page out of white supremacy. They learn our culture. They can't hang. They can't keep up. It's too hard. It's too rough. So they revert to the only thing that they know. The way of the European, that is anti-black hatred. Let us keep going. The Conguero on Apache is actually a born and raised Bahamian man who came in and played the conga on that b-boy break. The, the most, probably the... There's Nan, rap fan, or black American rapper that would say conga. That's how you know it has nothing to do with rap. But again, this is all a red herring. 50% has been debunked. And the now category 115 hurricane headed towards Puerto Rico. Y'all better run because we don't got no paper towels for you. As a matter of fact, stay, stay, you gotta stay. The name of that hurricane is Microphone Check. They're boarding up windows. They're getting some rum. They're kicking their black grandparents out in the street. Not enough, not enough room, Granny. 
to let the white homeless people in. It hasn't shaken. They're trying to preemptively strike. But the problem is they're not George Bush. They don't have friends like Dick Cheney that make weapons. And your daddy ain't daddy Bush. A confused, bleached out, flavorless, too much water in the Kool-Aid. You know what, let's just keep going. Number one B-boy anthem ever by the incredible bongo band was Apache. And so you still have an Afro-Caribbean playing the conga hits in this B-boy anthem. He brought... And you've had white people, actually more white people involved in Puerto Ricans in rap and they wouldn't dare. You saw Eminem get up there. After that N-word stuff came out. Talking about who he respected. So again, it's almost comical, but yet spooky in how they use outdated methods. The whites have been since moved on to trying to explain things to us. Keenan Grace is a great channel. Let us keep going. Uh, give it up, turn it loose by James Brown. The conga player on that song, his name is John Griggs. John Griggs played with Fania All Stars. He played with Latin bands, okay? And he brings the balo rhythm, right? That came from Africa. There is nothing Latin about rap. I don't care what band he played for. Africa into Cuba. And the, the people who settled in Cuba, that's the balo rhythm that you hear on Give It Up, Turn It Loose. He went on to say that we've always played conga rhythms. He actually calls it the Congo, but it's actually pronounced the conga. He said we've always... Which comes from the Congo. Let us keep going. Played those rhythms. You've not played those rhythms in any of the big bands, in any of the early, early ragtime jazz, you don't start to use the Afro-Caribbean instrumentation until you connect with those Afro-Caribbeans at the Palladium by way of Dizzy Gillespie. From Cuba, but, you know, he's not mentioning that now so he can slide in like a sixth grader jumping in your prom limo and you don't want him to come. I never went to the prom. Let us keep going who connects with Chano Bozo and they create the signature classic called Manteca. That's when the what? Who? African American bands start to utilize the Afro-Caribbean percussive sounds. Facts. He went on to talk about rapping. He said lack of facts. We've always we've always been rhyming. That's true. Rhyming has been around for a long time. But there is a difference between what you see in the 20s, the 30s, and the 40s, and what you see with the movement known as hip-hop in the 70s. And it's not until Grandmaster Flash lays down the bedrock of the two breaks for the MCs to start rhyming to. Nobody does this. No, what you're seeing is a difference in technology. A car in the 1920s also didn't have 12 inch woofers and amplifiers and tweeters and that Orion or Kenwood on the top of the windshield. Oh, wait, no, that was in 1992. Never mind. It didn't have the neon kit under the car. Wait, no, that was in 1995. Deception. White supremacy. Wild. E. Coyote. Just can't get it right. So, like I said before, the things that I've said on this channel have actually just come true. And I've said them because I've seen this on a smaller level, the pettiness. Like I said, my photography operation during the holidays in New York City, a lot of times you would get cats from the island of Puerto Rico. They were actually always hella cool. What it was, was their wannabe Italian New York family members would stop, would watch from afar. Oh, they make a purchase from me. Then they would run up and say, no, don't give them that. Always the Puerto Ricans. 
every once in a while the white people, but usually the Puerto Ricans. You're talking about crash test dummies, about clones, robots programmed to be anti-black. Therefore, having a debate is not necessary. We'll keep going. Before Flash himself creates the bed for the MCs to rock to. Those are facts that are undeniable. So you cannot compare what the Jubileers are doing, what other people are doing, what, what, what Pig Meat Markham is doing. You can't compare that. Now he was scared to say Pig Meat Markham because the song Here Comes the Judge, the beat can be blended in with a beat right now. Honestly, a couple of those lines could too. Come election time, you go your ways and I'll go mine. He was flowing. He was on TV flowing. Like Lord Jamar said, he was being played at the house parties. You can not only compare it, you can explain and point out and teach that it is the original rap music which came from out of, outside of New York. That's what this is really about. And which also came, which means it came from black Americans. And that's not even open for debate. This is America, Jack. White Americans know where music came from. They know. When I was in the big brother, little bro brother thing in Jersey, the white college students, my my, uh, my big brother was 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 a was a, a college uh, football player. This white dude. Played it at Princeton. He knew he knew all the Run DMC lyrics, all of them. They didn't create hip hop, so let's watch the clown show a little bit more. Because now it's getting into the point where it's just proving raw status TV, right? But then again, that's why we are growing every day because there are many like-minded people. I think Pygmy Markham is actually the only one that actually rhymes over a drum track. Anything before that, they're really rhyming over guitars and different instruments. It's okay, the Jubilaries were straight dropping bars. Gil Scott Heron and the Last Poets had all kind of drums. Rap today isn't always a heavy drum sound. It is uh, drum oriented. But there's songs that are different because rap is all about putting together something different and innovative, not about biting, like Spanish culture. It's black American culture. It means to be different. As a matter of fact, you got to be different. Like Guru said, you'll get played out, son. And this is getting played out. Again, this is why it's always wise to break off a fibber or a liar from Jump Street. Because it'll turn into a wasting of your time and a raising of your blood pressure. But then again, your blood pressure doesn't raise if you know what you're dealing with. You don't walk barefoot through a field in the middle of the city, especially New York. Why? Because that's where they walk their dogs. Let us keep going. It's not the same. And, and you can keep, you know, when we think about rhyme, we think about, you know, Mother Goose, Dr. Seuss. The limericks of the Irish. That's right. No, we don't. If someone says, uh, I got a, I got a, um, a download, almost a, a CD with a cat on there rhyming, you're going to think rap. Because rapping is rhyming. What the Jubilaries did was rapping. Old school black people, that was slang that they used, the word rap. So, again, this is all to use misdirection to keep us off of the main focus. That is the lies told by Fat Joe and the rest of the New York white supremacist Hispanics that dress, act, and talk like they're black. And don't forget about the extensive collections of Motown. I mean, right? But that 
that's not the same as the movement that came to be known as MCing in hip hop in the 70s. It's different. No, it's not different. It is the basis. Just like old school rock and roll doesn't really sound like it does now. But then again, the basis of hard rock is still black. The basis of grunge rock is still black. You've now painted yourself into a corner. You're like Kubert with no more squares left. The Jubilaries have bars. Don't you dare disrespect. I played the Jubilaries from the homie. Truck driving. Balling ass bro. Keeps that thing on him. Out of Florida. We disagree on everything. We disagree on reparations. We disagree on racism. I put that on, he said, that's what I'm talking about. We know rhythm when we hear it. My grandmother used to rap in the kitchen while she was cooking cake and sweet potato pie. Having a way with words. But again, why am I defending when they've already lost the initial point? What is he saying? He's trying to fight for a little corner in the rap hall of fame? As a spectator, Sylvester Stallone was in the audience when he got the inspiration for Rocky. In the audience of what? Of a Muhammad Ali fight against Chuck Wettner. A role that I read for, actually. For Ali. And the movie The Bleeder, where Wettner got a couple of lucky shots in the first round and then Ali straight up demolished him. It was nothing like Rocky. But does that mean that Stallone had anything to do with Ali's career? Does that mean that Rocky was a real person? No. And what he's saying isn't real, and he knows it. He was timid and whispering in the presence virtually of someone that knew what the hell they were, they were talking about in flex to Rick Nasheed. But now he has all this bass in his voice. That little tood. Gotta watch these people. Again, his goal is not to speak the truth. His goal is to not respect a black person. What about that decree against the African race that you're very aware of? I wanna hear you, hear you speak on that, Cologne, Columbus, the namesake. When we talk about the inspirations of poetry and who was inspired, listen to Coke LaRock. And Coke LaRock will tell you that his inspiration to do what he did came from this song that's called Hibaro, My Pretty Nigga. And that song was done by Felipe Luciano, a member. Okay, now he slipped that in there, though, you know, and coming, coming from them, that's an attack. Don't think it's not. But in my opinion, but you know, someone made a good point to me earlier. They said for Fat Joe and these people to be relevant, how come they have to use the N-word? You're not even relevant unless you're saying the N-word. Why does Fat Joe say that so much? It sounds forced and lame after a while. Real black people use it sparingly, depending on the company. I don't even say that. It's, it's more of a curse word or a special occasion word. Sometimes a joke. You have to be black to be down. But it conflicts with your early childhood teachings. So you're just angry. Because you have nowhere to go. The whites don't want, want you. The black people will check you. And in Spain, they call you spam. And the British call you all savages. So why not just be 100 and you would actually get more respect, more recognition, and more money. You are the palm palm holders of rap. Give me an H. H. Give me an I. I. Give me a P. 
Pete. What's that spell? Oh, please. Of the last poets. Facts. Then he starts to talk about Pumpkin and the fact that Pumpkin was Panamanian. And he says nobody knew that he was Panamanian. Well, that's a complete lie. Because the conga player that plays on rapping and rocking the house, his name is Silos Congas. And in fact, he spent much time in Pumpkin. Okay, so we're going to pause it here. I'm probably going to stop it. I'll get to, to the other video. Uh, listen, I've, I've, had, I've, ha I've had enough. Imagine yourself being immersed in an entire city where people like this are the norm. The entire city. Or at least where they be. Hit that thumbs up. But instead of getting frustrated, instead of, be, of becoming angry like them, you do what black Americans do. You peep. You observe. You stay low. You move smooth than a motherfucker. And you wait. Because you understand that you're dealing with someone that is not coming from a genuine base, which means that they will easily be debunked and defeated. See the Confederacy. This is Walt Status TV. Leave your comments in the box. And pepper Lou. Still, I make it rain like doing curls in DC. I'm getting capital gains. Know thyself, and the enemy is no concern. I yearn for my turn. Let the rubber meet the road. I love to feel the burn. Pass the bag. No, we ain't standing for the flag. To the pigs is independent. Reparations are passed. No fame, no shame. I started late in the game. So call this a must win. Making franchise money with a dollar store pen. No coach, no lights. I trained in the midnight. The shadow, the pad, the combination, the jab. My position is pole. Don't even try to pass. Try to check a flag. Give me my flowers at last. I said the pain, the strife. I said the rank, the strife. Dominance is achieved through daily dedication. Losing is the disease. Success, the medication. Grind hard to just shine. Execution. Yeah.